Good morning, I'm Kurt Berglund, and this is the second of a two-part series on pine tar baseball, how to play it, and maybe clear up some questions that folks have written me about, uh, about uh, how to look at the cards, the process for playing the game. If you look at the first video that I created, to post it just a few days ago, uh, it goes through the uh, the tables, the strategy charts, um, everything that you need to be able to play the game from a rules perspective. Today what I'm going to go through is how the cards work, what they look like, how you read them, and how the batters and pitchers sort of face off in the game. I'm also going to tell you at the end how to get free stuff. So bear with me and uh, buckle up. Let's get started. Pine Tar Baseball features a unique uh, combination of pitchers and hitters and what uh, the information is on the cards. These are cards that I've recently created and I'll tell you how to get uh, in just a few minutes. Uh, I am creating uh, right now, this is, um, I'm posting this in January of 2021 and uh, I am creating franchise all-stars for the Negro Leagues right now. It's going to be a set of over 200 cards. They'll be ready in a month or so, maybe two. And um, I will announce when it's listed and uh, how to get it. And I'll preview it on my channel as well. But these are some sample cards of the set. So we have uh, Satchel Page here on the left and Josh Gibson on the right. If you look at a pitcher's card... In Pine Tar Baseball, you'll see their batting column is right here. So this has nothing to do with their pitching. This is just Satchel Page's hitting for the 1928 Birmingham season. Um, on the Negro Leagues cards, I give the information about when they entered the Hall of Fame, if they did, uh, what seasons they were an All-Star. The All-Star game for the Negro Leagues started in 1933. And now we get to the meat of the story, the pitching grades. This stuff I went over in my previous video. Base running, sacrifice hit chances, stolen base chances, stolen base opportunities, and their injury rating. This is their fielding. Up here we see Page's fielding rating, which is in red. That's explained in the other video as well. The number of times he appeared as a starter in 1928 for Birmingham and the number of times he appeared in relief. Here is where the pitcher's information gets important in this part of the card. So Pine Tar is unique because it has away and home splits for pitchers. So they get an e Satchel Page gets an A plus grade the first two times through the batting order when he is on the road, the third time through the order and subsequent times through the order he drops to an A. At home he begins with an A plus, and the third time through the order and subsequent times he continues with the A plus grade. Now, he gets automatic strikeouts. This is where. Um, strikeouts and walk modifiers happen in pine tar baseball he gets strikeout modifiers that turn what would otherwise be outs into strikeouts on rolls between 55 and 60 and 77 maximum innings pitched how long can he work without a potential adjustments eight innings as a starter three innings as a reliever you see the slash line in the middle and then we have his balk and wild pitch chances in the bottom right corner. Okay. Now, to keep it simple, we're going to look at Josh Gibson's card. Most cards in uh, Pine Tar Baseball have split chances between lefties and righties for hitters. The Negro Leagues cards do not. Uh, there's ordinarily two columns here. Uh, but we're going to keep it simple just to be able to read the card. Uh, batters have splits in Pine Tar Baseball, but in the Negro Leagues cards, they do not. Uh, Hall of Fame for Josh Gibson. His defensive ratings and the positions he can play. His all-star appearances. 
the season and the year that is reflected. A little bit about his statistical information. He hit 367 in 1938 against Negro Leagues competition. This stuff again, his base running speed, his sacrifice hit chances, his stolen base chances, his stolen base opportunity, his injury rating, his arm as an outfielder, and then his arm in red as a catcher. This is his range info and his error chance. So all of this is pretty self-explanatory. If you roll the two D10s and you come up with these, you're going to get whatever it is that's across in the column. The two that are a little confusing, I suppose, would be ROEPO. ROEPO is an error check, and ROELO is an error check. Pop out if they don't make an error, and a line out if they don't make an error. Okay, now what happens when the pitchers and the batters interact? Well, in Pine Tar Baseball, we have a pitcher modifier table. We apply this on rolls in the ones column of 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Anytime these numbers are rolled, you would ordinarily be looking at the batter's card. So let's suppose that um, Josh Gibson is up against Satchel Page, and all you need for pine tar is two D10s. So you roll, let's say that Josh Gibson would roll a double zero uh, for his at bat. That's a double zero. But, but, that is a roll of a zero, which means that it's subject to the pitcher modifier table. So if we look at Josh Gibson's card, we see that a double zero is a home run. But, Josh Gibson is going up against Satchel Page, who's an A-plus pitcher. Let's suppose Satchel's on the road and Josh is at home for this at bat. The original result is a home run, but Satchel's rating is an A-plus. So it turns the home run into a walk. The new result is a walk. So the home run becomes a walk because Page is an incredible pitcher. Now, let's look at the reverse. Let's say Page would be the worst possible pitcher. And Gibson rolls a double zero. We look down here to the column of ratings between C and G. G being the worst pitcher you can possibly be in Pine Tar. The home run stays a home run. In fact, if you're a G pitcher, even a single, a double, or a triple can turn into a home run if you roll that on the batter's card. Okay, so let's take a few samples. We're gonna read the colored die first as the tens number, the white die is the ones number. So we have a 10. So we're gonna be on the modifier table again. First, we look at Gibson's result. Eight to 13 is a double on Gibson's card. The 10 falls between eight and 13, so he gets a double, but it ends in a zero or a five. So we have to look on the modifier table. So we have a double, uh, and the A plus pitcher, the double for the A plus pitcher turns into a walk. All right, let's try it again. A 58. On Gibson's card, a 58 becomes a ground out to second base. Okay. And a 60 becomes a ground out to second base. All right. Now let's take a minute and put Satchel up against a card with that has split chances. And we'll take a look at what that looks okay, like. Okay, let's, let's suppose, for the sake of argument, Satchel's going up against Robin Yount from the... Uh, franchise all-star set for the Brewers. Well, notice that we have split chances now versus right-handed, left-handed pitchers and versus right-handed pitchers in the game. So because Page is a right-handed pitcher, we see that on his card, we know that this is the column we'll be looking at. So let's see how Yount does. He rolls a 16. 
The 16 puts us in between 10 and 28 on the single outcome on his card versus the right-handed pitcher, which is Page. Do it one more time. The vast majority of uh, pine tar cards look like this one for batters with two columns. Here's an 81. The 81 puts us between 78 and 87, and it's a fly out to center field. Now, if we had rolled a 37, we would be doing a range, I'm sorry, an error check and using that chart that I explained in the previous video. Or if we had rolled a 98, it would be an error check that I explained in the previous video, same chart. Any batter that is up that rolls a 99 there is a balk or wild pitch chance if there is a batter if there's a runner on base and other than that this is pretty straightforward as far as what your outcomes are going to be the ones die determines whether there is a double play chance a fielder's choice chance or if the batter's advance or if the runners advance on a ground out and that's it. That's all you need to be able to play Pine Tar Baseball. So if you want to try the game for yourself, what, what do you do? What do you do? Well, here's the information. If you're interested in trying out the game for free, I will send you a PDF of the game that you can use to try it out. Email me at Berglund, B-E-R-G-L-A-N-D, Kurt, K-U-R-T, at Gmail. Lowercase, uppercase, I don't think Gmail matters. For a free Pine Tar game, which I will send to you, and a free Negro League set of cards that look like these. If, and then you can use that those cards with the instructions to try out the game for yourself. In fact, if I've already sent you the cards, I've got another sheet of cards that you may not have. So you'll be actually getting uh, 54 Negro Leaguers, uh, the, some of the best of all time, in the set that I send to you for absolutely no charge. Why? Because we're just trying to show the game and give you a chance to try it out and see if you like it. That's it. That's all you need. Now, if you have questions, remember, all you need for the game are two D10s. There are instructions in the game for how to use three D10s and a D6 to increase the randomness of your rolls. But at the very base, if you have two D10s, you're ready to play Pine Tar Baseball. If you'd like the game or the cards, shoot me an email, and I'll send them right out to you in a PDF that you can print and get rolling on your own. If you have questions, please let me know. And I'll also let you know when the um, complete Negro Leagues Franchise All-Star set is complete and available for you to pick that up as well. Thanks again. My name's Kurt Berglund. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more Pine Tar updates and game demos of all kinds. Thanks again. I hope you have a good day. So long, everybody.